Hey guys, Gus Mitchell here. I wanted to talk to you about capped honey and open honey here. In my region, this time of year, I start getting lots of questions uh, about this, about moisture content, uh, people having issues with capped honey being too wet. Now this, this little talk is for my region, guys. So if you're up north and you're listening to me, um, I hope that you get something out of this. But remember, beekeeping can be very regional. So uh, I won't call it a wives tale, but it's, um, it's often said and, and told and taught that capped honey is dry honey. Well, here in my area, in this Memphis metro area and extending all the way you know, into the upper delta up in Arkansas and North Mississippi. Um, it's extremely humid. It stays humid. Uh, it's really wet most times of the year, uh, very muggy. And after the summer solstice, the bees, uh, they typically don't cap the honey like they would before. So you're not gonna get capped honey later on. That honey, that honey is fine. These top boxes, our soybean flow is dwindling down. It's, it's pretty much over. And they've made these boxes of honey. And they're not gonna cap this. It'll be just like that, right, right on up through probably October you'll look at it, it still won't be capped. Which is no problem, it's more than likely dry. And even if it wasn't, it's extremely easy to lower that moisture content when it's uncapped. And it's no problem. Um, capped honey. The center frames in this box, which I've missed a little honey here. I should add another box on this one. So they've probably backfilled some of this into the brood chamber, but uh, I have some burr comb. And it does look like these capped this. Ooh, excuse me there. Let me get a prettier one after I boogered that. So just because this is capped does not mean that it's dry. We're, we're taught that, but here in this area, it's just not true. You can have 21, 22% honey that is capped. Um, and the only way that you can tell is if you use your refractometers. So just going by this is not a good idea. So kind of get that out of your head. Uh, open cells do not mean wet honey capped honey does not mean dry honey so you have to learn how to mitigate these things um, some tips that I have for you on that is to not pull your honey after rains you need to wait a couple days after rains the moisture uh, in the air the honey's going to pull it and that's the main problem with even the capped honey it can still pull some moisture and it does so that's one tip for you is, is let it dry out before you pull your honey. You don't want to pull your honey uh, right after a rainstorm. You need to let it dry. Second tips that I have for you is to invest in a dehumidifier, just a simple household dehumidifier and use box fans and dehumidifiers the way that I've shown in some of my other videos. Um, it's very simple. You can dry your honey down at least a point this way. Um, and it'll get you right into that good safe area that you want to be. Not all honey will, will be dry, super dry honey like they get in other places. You know, I have a friend out in California and he gets 15% honey regularly. Um, late season honey here can be difficult to, to get to that point. You might be lucky if it's under 19 sometimes. So um, in my personal experience, overall, it's difficult to, uh, to get honey really that's less than 18 across the board um, and you may say oh Gus I, my honey's 17% or 
16% or what have you. Yeah, I'm sure that you probably got some supers. I have some supers as well here that will probably read 16%. Um, maybe not right now, but that have. I have buckets by the dozens in there that are 16 and a half, 17%. Uh, when you pull a lot of honey and, and you factor in averages and things, then that's where I come up with this. So honestly, um, you're doing pretty good to average around 18% and get it that low uh, and blend your drier honeys with your wetter honeys. It's just the reality of this area. You're not gonna get super dry honey. But anyway, um, I've heard some heartbreak stories and I've had some of my own pulling capped honey and just assuming it's dry and ending up with extremely wet honey. So that's not something to count on in our region. You, you don't want to count on these cappings. You want to count on that refractometer and you want to do everything that you can to, to dry the honey if that's uh, what it boils down to. Now this is soybean honey primarily with uh, red vine, little sumac, all these other little things. Uh, quite a bit of maypop right here that's kind of shriveled up. They're a beautiful flower when it's not, but Let's have a taste while we're here. I done busted this frame. Yeah, it's very good. I can taste the soybean and red vine influence. It'll probably be um, medium to light amber honey. Very sweet. But there's always, there's this little bit of bite that it gets from the vine that separates it from like cotton honey, uh, straight soybean honey. Straight soybean honey almost looks like antifreeze sometimes. Um, it's just very sweet. But once you get the um, natural forage blending in with this stuff, it, it takes on a, a different flavor. Very good stuff. But anyways, I'm rambling guys. I hope you take something from this. Capped honey's not always dry honey. Open honey's not always wet. Catch you guys around.